Actually, it all started because you like cling peaches. You're late because I like cling peaches? In heavy syrup, excuse me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's something funny going on here. Why were you two hours at the supermarket? Well, they're having a sale at Ferguson's Market. Uh, four cents off the medium-sized can and seven cents off the large can. I don't care And I had the coupons that give you two cents off every can, so I could it didn't call it. You are invading the issue. You're hiding something from me. You ain't gonna move off this spot till I find out what it is. Oh, oh, ready, hi, Daddy. Oh, yeah. Hi, Mom. What took you so long? Don't ask me. He would uh, take this bag and <laughs> Can't you stand still here? I just want to hang up my coat. What is the matter with you, Edith? Oh, thank you, Gloria, for getting the dinner on. You're such a big help. I want to thank Michael, too. He helped me set the table. Oh, thank you, Mike. It's good practice for when you have your own home. Wait a minute. Nobody ate nothing around here. <laughs> Can I find out what went wrong at the soup and Now, oh, come on, get it. Well, I knew you liked cling peaches. Yeah, I heard that before. In heavy syrup. Yeah, I heard that too. I know. Why don't you tell me how much I've told you so far? Then I'll know where to begin. <laughs> you ain't told me nothing so far except cling peaches, which is coming out of my ears. Now, don't say them two words no more, huh? Start your story after the cling peaches and get on with it. <laughs> I had an accident with a car. What? Oh, are you all right? Did you get hit? Oh, no. I didn't get hit. I hit the car. Oh, I, you don't drive. Yeah, and even if you do, we don't have a car. <laughs> How did you hit a car? Well, that's where the... <laughs> <laughs> to say those two words. David, what are you trying to tell me? That you hit a car with a can of clean peaches? That's right. You see, I was coming out of the market with my shopping basket full of... Mm -hmm. and, and there was Mrs. Duncan with her new baby. I took a peek in the carriage, but I couldn't see the baby too well. He was all swinged up Will with you get on with the story? <laughs> anyway, I knew I had to say something nice about the baby, so I went, oh, isn't that a beautiful baby? And when I went, oh, the shopping basket got away from me, rolled down the hill and smashed into this parked car and scratched the fender, and then this can of mm-hmm. <laughs> in heavy syrup <laughs> jumped out and made a big dent in the hood. <laughs> it was a freak accident. Believe me, if there was an emergency here, I'd give you this check without thinking twice about it. But right now, I'd like to use the money for something special. Something special? What? Well, like, uh, like getting Gloria that winter coat she's been needing. Oh, Michael, really? Yeah. Oh, thank you, honey. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. A winter coat. How much is that going to take? Well, I don't know. How much? Uh, around $80. Oh, $80. Well, all right. What are you going to do with the other round about $200? Well, that I'd like to use for something really important. Like what? Like giving it to the McGovern campaign. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding, Arch. There's a real emergency. Don't you see that the election's only two weeks away and they need the money desperately? Do you mean to say that you'd give $200 to them people and forget all about your own family here? Arch, I'm doing it for my family because I want to keep us living in a democracy. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that the Republicans have over $30 million while the Democrats had to put on a telethon just to keep their heads above water. Your head is underwater. <laughs> you hear this guy, Gloria? 
Are you gonna stand there? Do you hear what your husband is saying? You gonna let him do that? Why not? Arts, don't you see? The, the party with the money can afford to buy TV and radio time to get their message across to the people. The other party doesn't stand a chance. Before you know it, you've lost the two-party system. And gee, it, it's, it's getting like politics in America. It's only for the rich. Who's been feeding you that commie crap all <laughs> President Eisenhower said that. He did not. Eisenhower was a great president who never said nothing. <laughs> I saw it in the Reader's Digest. Oh, I wonder if they paid him a hundred dollars. <laughs> and I wonder if you could get the supper on the table. Hundred dollars, <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe that you give two hundred dollars to them McGovern's. Why not, Arch? I want to help him get his message across. I can tell you McGovern's message in three words. What? I want to be president. Message ended. <laughs> President, Nixon hasn't kept any of his promises. He promised to end the war, to reduce unemployment, and to stop inflation. Don't be picking on a man over minor details like that. <laughs> the American people don't elect the president over that stuff anyhow. They don't like a guy like McGovern who's running around changing his mind all the time. They want a man like Nixon who don't change for nothing. <laughs> You're right about that, Arch. He keeps making the same mistakes over and over again. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing more from you because you've been freeloading here off of me for the last two years. I ain't said a word. I ain't complaining. What? I, what are you talking about, Arch? That's all you've been doing is complaining. Don't run away. Don't run away to the facts. <laughs> yeah, the first time in your life a miracle happens. You get a little lump of dough in your fist. You could do the right thing with it and give it to me. <laughs> but you don't see it that way. How does anybody get through to you? Dinner! Oh, that's how they get through to them. <laughs> Look at him, running for the chow like Rin Tin Tin. Oh, Daddy, if Michael wants to give his money to a worthy cause, that's his business. Listen, where's your family feeling? Did you went to Sunday school, didn't you? Huh? Try and remember what the Bible says about charity. It's better to give than to receive. That's Aesop's fables. <laughs> that's what book says. That charity begins and ends at home. Look at him there. He's eating so fast, sparks are flying out of his knife and fork. <laughs> To the right, you can eat on the porch and steal the food I paid for there, buddy. Oh, Archie, don't talk Addy, to him. Are you, my wife, cooking for him? I don't That's mind. gonna stop now until he starts chipping in for something. Well, if that's the way you want it, okay. I'm working, so I'll pay for the food. And what's more, I'll cook for him. I can, you know, I can cook. This is your fault. <laughs> And in case you're worried about tonight, anything we eat, I'll pay for it. <laughs> You hear your daughter turning on her father that way? 22 years. I never heard her open a yap like that. But she's just sticking up for her husband. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the life of me. I'll never understand women. The way they marry some guy who wants to make a damn fool of himself. But still, they love him. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Arch. <laughs> Lovely. Really, Michael and I can't thank you enough. Well, how often does my only daughter <laughs> celebrate her first wedding anniversary? Just think, Archie. Gloria and Mike have been with us as man and wife for one whole year. Ain't that wonderful? <laughs> I celebrate the 365th day of a two take. <laughs> Where is the meathead, anyhow? He ought to be here with the food any minute. Daddy, will you please stop calling him names? Tonight means something to Michael and me, so why don't you just join in the spirit of the celebration? Yeah, it's their first anniversary. That's the paper anniversary, ain't it, Edith? Yeah. Well, I'm writing the spirit then. I'm reading the paper. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Hey. Mm. Easy to tell him to cut that out and bring the food over, huh? All right, Archie. 
Come on. Okay, everybody. I'll Let's get see. some nice bowls. Never mind the bowls. Either. Just dish it out. It's getting cold in the bag. Okay, we got sub gum chow mein. We got uh, sweet and sour pork, some fried rice, some egg rolls, and what else? We got some egg foo young. Good. Let's go. Let okay. me fix your plate for you. I've got my Gee. own plate, eat it, and I'm fixing it myself. Where's the sweet and sour? Oh, right over there. Now, the best way to eat this is for everybody is to taste a little of everything. That's your way to eat it, that ain't mine. <laughs> Daddy, you're hogging the rice. Here it is. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Because I ain't got a fork. Either. Oh, well, the kids thought since it's a special occasion and it's Chinese food, we'll all use chopsticks. I don't care if it's chinks, I want a fork. <laughs> Archie, it's Chinese food. That's what I said, chinks. <laughs> and I ain't knocking the Chinese people by saying that. It's just how I and everybody I know calls their food. And their laundries. <laughs> Will you stay out of this, huh? That's what you call them. Will you stifle yourself? Just the other day, you told me to take your shirts to the chinky laundry. <laughs> I don't care what I told you, dear. I'm telling you now, I can't eat the food with these chink pickup sticks, so get me a <laughs> Right away, Archie. Hey, Archie. I mean, I how can you talk like that? I mean, with one word, you're putting away an entire race of people. Uh -huh. And yeah, that's right, not just the Chinese. The Laotians, the Cambodians, the Vietnamese, the uh -huh. Koreans. Hold oh, it there, meathead. I never call them countries chinks. No, he calls them gooks. <laughs> You said they're, uh, they're all your yellow race. They ain't exactly chinks, but they're definitely offshoots of your chinks. They're, what do you call, uh, chinkish? <laughs> all right, enough's enough, huh? Daddy, I asked you not to upset Michael tonight. What am I doing? Uh, Gloria, why shouldn't he upset me? I mean, why is tonight any different? I mean, nothing's changed. I've been putting up with the same bull ever since the first time I met him. Oh, don't remind me of that, meathead. Because that night is stamped inedibly on my heart. <laughs> Along with other fond memories of the past, like Pearl Harbor and the crash of the Hindenburg. You're met by a rabbi. What would you do? I'd drop dead. <laughs> but that's a stupid supposing it, because everybody knows that in heaven there ain't no differences of race or color. Everybody's equal white Christians. <laughs> What about hell? Are there any white Christians in hell? You better be careful, you're gonna find out. <laughs> I'll tell you something, you ain't got no respect in you. That's the trouble with Joe Hobson and your son Bernard. That's the thanks Joe got after bringing that kid into the world. Well, what thanks should he get? I mean, gee, I think if you bring a kid into the world nowadays, you owe an apology. I know if it was up to me, I, I wouldn't be born into this rotten world. What's the matter with the world today? Well, for one thing, it's too crowded. Not for me, it was too crowded for you. Why don't you step off of it? <laughs> There are over four billion people in the world today. We don't have enough food to feed half of them. And in 25 years, Asia alone's gonna have four billion. Who's gonna take care of all those people? God. Oh, well, that, that's a relief. How's he gonna do that? Like he always done it in the past. Anytime he figured the world was too full, God and his infinite mercy give us wars. All <laughs> earthquakes, floods, diseases, and pestilentiaries like that. <laughs> Nice to have an intelligent conversation with you. Oh, you don't really mean that because the trouble with you is, like I said before, that you ain't got no respect. Well, oh, it's respect has to be earned. Well, so does a living, but that don't mean nothing to you. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, there's a big hate your parents movement going on in this country, in the U.S. of A., but it wasn't an American that started it. It was a German head shrinker by the name of Sigmund Fruess. <laughs> said that parents can create a lot of problems. Oh, he's wacky. Parents create children, 
and children create the problems, including you, little girl. Me? What problems did I ever cause? Well, tip a glance to your right there. <laughs> That's not funny, Arch. No, it's sad and it's terrible. Daddy, I didn't ask to be born. Oh, well, now you're here. I mean, uh, what are we gonna do, get your vote? Look at this here, you see? This is the appreciation you get for making a big decision to bring a kid into this world. Oh, big decision. Come off it, Arch. The only reason a lot of people have kids is because they forget to make a trip to the drugstore. <laughs> Can you keep your mouth shut about nothing? I didn't say nothing. Oh, my. You know how you used to always call me your little pink bundle from heaven? Well, you can't do that anymore, because I just found out I was a surprise package. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, now you know. Kind of keep it indoors, huh? <laughs> Things like that happen in the best of films. Well, that won't happen to me and Michael, huh, honey? That's right. We're not going to have any kids. Why? I said we're not gonna have any kids. Why? You don't mean that. Oh, no, Ma, he means while we're living here. What? No, no, Gloria, I mean we're not gonna have any kids, period. What? You didn't talk like that when we got married. What? what? <laughs> A lot of things have changed since then. What did you do, me, then? Sneak off to some chiropractor and get yourself fixed? <laughs> I just don't feel it's right to bring kids into the world today. Just like that, you decide we're not going to have any children? Not just like that, Gloria. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Michael, why didn't you just at least discuss it with your wife first? You didn't discuss it with me, neither. <laughs> I was going to tell you. Tell me? How about ask me? I thought our marriage was a partnership, not a dictatorship. This guy's a dictator here. Yeah! Oh, Gloria, be rational. That's another Hitler over there. Well, not a Hitler. Why not? Hitler didn't have no kids. He had a police dog. <laughs> oh, I think we better go upstairs and let him finish No, 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 no. We're in this, and we're going to stay in this. You sit down. Arch, oh, this doesn't concern you. That kid that you don't want to have happens to be my grandson. <laughs> Jordan! Well, whatever. What Mike said, Mr. Bunker, I'm just an American who prefers living in Canada. Oh, I do. See, I got an answer from him. Fine, prefers living in Canada. The next question is, what the hell you got in Canada you ain't got here? <laughs> Pass the eggs, huh? Up here, Daddy. Huh? What's the answer? Freedom. Did you say freedom? Yes, sir. Freedom. Oh, come on, will you? You got more freedom in the U.S. of A than you got any place else in the world. This is the land of the free. You never hear of that? Mr. Bunker, for some of us, America is not free. Well, uh, I think it's pretty free for everybody in this room and around this here table. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. What the hell do you mean by free? Uh, Daddy, would you stop giving David the third degree? Don't give him no, no, let's change the subject. How much more peace? Yeah, Reese is helping him. Wait, 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 wait a minute here. You know, I mean, uh, I kind of get the feeling that, uh, you know, you're all trying to shove something uh, underneath the tablecloth. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't be funny. <laughs> Whenever I ask him what he's doing up in Canada, ain't it like he's a deserter from the army or something, is that? No, sir. I'm not oh. a deserter. Well, I didn't think you was. I was just trying to figure I'm out. I'm a draft what dodger. <laughs> what did he say? He said he was a draft dodger. <laughs> well, come on, everybody, eat, eat. <laughs> You're a draft dodger from the selective yeah, service okay. of the U.S. Yeah, right? Yes, sir. Eat it, uh, hey, eat it, <laughs> hey, hey, eat it. I mean, uh, before you start eating over there, eat it. Did you hear this over here? Draft dodger, fugitive from justice, you know? FBI, how would you like the FBI coming I mean, have dinner with you here? Oh, Archie, we ain't got enough turkey. <laughs> Nobody to 
to touch no food here till I get an explanation of this. Daddy, David doesn't owe you or anyone at this table any explanations. He owes explanations to the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Commander in Chief of the U.S. of A, the President. Will you put the flag away? It's Christmas, not the Fourth of July. I, ain't I wrote to, you to the President man. about it, Mr. Bunker. He just couldn't come up with as many reasons for killing people as I could for not killing them. What do you know about that? Now, you like that, Pinky, How huh? We got a draft dodger here, writes a snotty letter to the Commander-in-Chief. I mean, what the hell do you do with that? Look, Mr. Bunker, I don't want to spoil your Christmas dinner, so maybe I should go. You're not oh, spoiling. no! Oh, Daddy, don't let him go! Don't make him go! Certainly he's got to go! What are you talking about? If the FBI was to find him here, we could all be having Christmas dinner in a who's gal. <laughs> Look, Arch, what David did took a lot of guts. Do My own father doesn't guts. understand. Why should he? When the hell are you it. going to admit that the war was wrong? I ain't talking about that war. I don't want to talk about that rotten damn war no more. I'm talking about something else. And what he done was wrong. Saying he won't go. Well, you think the whole people of this country can say whether or not they want to go to war? You couldn't get a decent war off the ground that way. <laughs> All the young people would say no. Sure they would, because they don't want to get killed. And that's why we leave it to the Congress, because them old crocs ain't going to get killed. <laughs> and they're going to do the right thing and get behind the president and vote yes. That's if my opinion is of any importance. Certainly uh... your opinion is important. A gold star father. Your opinion is more important than anybody else in this room, and I want to hear that opinion. I, I want these young people here to hear that opinion. Now, you tell them, Pinky, you tell them. I understand how you feel, Arch. My kid hated the war, too. But he did what he thought he had to do. And David here did what he thought he had to do. But David's alive to share Christmas dinner with us. And if Steve were here, he'd want to sit down with him. And that's what I want to do. Merry Christmas, David. Merry Christmas, sir.